like tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In our previous video, we set up our Kubernetes cluster and everything is working nicely there. We got our nodes ready, we got our masters, and everything going well for us. But I want to add an extra level. I want to add the ability to persist our data outside of the cluster instead of using the space inside the iSCSI disks for each of the pies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install a driver that allows me to use a special storage class created by Synology and some contributors directly in the Synology NAS. So, for example, if we create a persistent volume, then that volume, instead of being created inside the iSCSI of the Raspberry Pis, is going to be created directly in the NAS in another LUN. So that LUN is going to be separate from the space that we have for the Raspberry Pis. And that's great because we can do different things. It allows us to do LUNs, but it also allows us to do Samba, CIFS. So we can store that data in either one of those two ways. So I think this is very useful and it's going to make our system more robust. And uh, I think it's, it's a good thing to have. So I'm going to follow the documentation here that I have created to install the things that we need. So the first thing is I'm already changed directory into the place where I have all the information that we're going to use. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a kubectl apply file and then I'm going to pass the whole folder that says Synology CRDs because the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the custom resource definitions from Synology and those are two which is the volume snapshot CRDs and the common snapshot controller so those things have to be set up before we even do anything else so let's do this and we can see that everything's been created we have the all other stuff so that's looking good so far the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, we need to make sure that we have at least one storage pool and one volume configured in our NAS. I've already done that, so I know for sure that I have that. If you have not done that, then go to the storage manager and make sure that you have that. You have at least one or you can have an extra one dedicated for this. Once we have done that, the other thing that we would have to check is that all of our nodes are able to communicate with our NAS. So in my case, I've already done that too, but it's as simple as going into the Raspberry Pi and then doing a ping to the IP of the NAS that we care about. And if we get some response back, then we know that we have communication to that NAS device. So you can do that for each and every one of your Raspberry Pis to make sure that they can connect. Once we have done that, let me switch here to the Raspberry Pi directly. The next thing that we have to do is we have to clone the Synology open source CSI repository from GitHub. So we're just going to do that command git clone repository URL. And then now that we have all the contents of this repository, then there's a specific file that we have to look for in it. So that file exists in the config location. So we see a folder here named config the config client info template into a config client info not a template and then this is the file that we're going to be editing sudo nano config client info yaml then once we open this this is a configuration that we have to set up for our nas so that we can connect to the nas properly so this depends on how you configured your synology nas you can have multiple ones if you want. I only have one, so I'm going to remove the lines here that talk about an additional one. And then here we have some explanation as to what this is. In my case, I'm going to put the IP of the NAS that I'm using for this. And then I am using HTTPS, so I'm going to use the port 5001. If you are using HTTP, then you use 5000. But if you're using HTTPS, you have to use 5001. That's the port for HTTPS. And then if you're using HTTPS, like it's my case, here we have to change HTTPS to true. So in that case, then I'm going to put that there. And then here, where it says username and password, you have to give it the username and the password of an account that has 
enough permissions in the NAS to do things. So it could be your administrator account or any other account that you grant permissions. I'm gonna use the administrator account that I created. So let me do that off the video and save this file. All right, so I've done a control X, Y and enter to save. So now that file has been updated in the files that we have in our Raspberry Pi. So the next step that we have to do is we actually have to run the installation of this. So for that, we're gonna use, a, we're gonna trigger a script that is in the scripts folder and the script name is deploy and it's a shell script. And then we're gonna tell it to install and then dash dash all. This is telling it, let me make this a little bigger, that we want to install the complete set of things that are available for the CSI, not just the basic one. So it includes the controllers and the snapshotters and all the other things that we might need. So now we trigger this. So now actually I have to put sudo to give it permission to create things that it needs to. And we're gonna run this script that says deploy, install with everything. We do this, then we see that it connects to Kubernetes and is deploying a lot of things in the Kubernetes cluster. And let's just check that we don't have any error with anything here. Okay, but it looks like all the things were configured and created properly. So it was just a warning, nothing to worry about. Now, we sh it, now that I see that everything is settled, we should be able to see some pods related to Synology. So we can do a kubectl, get pods in the namespace. This is gonna be a specific namespace and what's created for this. So it's Synology CSI. And when we do this, we see a bunch of different pods that are running on the system. We have a controller pod, and then we have a bunch of nodes and a snapshot. So everything is looking good. Everything is running. We don't have any issues with this. So that's, that's good. We're moving forward properly. Now there is a snippet that I've added in the instructions that you can use to test whether you can create a persistent volume claim. And it is successful at creating that in the Synology NAS. So let's do a test with that. So let's do nano test YAML. And then I'm gonna drop that here. And then I'm gonna make a, a little changes here. So I'm gonna make use of the production namespace. So let me save this. And then we can actually try to apply this and see if it creates that. So we can do a kubectl, apply, f, and then test. YAML and then it says that the persistent volume claim was created so we can now check if it actually exists there. So it's in the production namespace and when we check it says yes we have my PV claim and it is bound. We have a volume ID capacity that we specified. It's a read write execute and it is a Synology iSCSI storage class there's no attributes set in here and apparently it's been there for a few seconds. So now we can check also in our Synology NAS to see if we see anything happening there. And guess what? If we go into our Synology NAS, we previously had 12 LUNs and now we have a new LUN here that was automatically created by Kubernetes in our NAS that is mounted and useful and it has the 200 gigabytes that we specified on that description. So everything looks good on this side. If we go into the LUNs, we can see that it is there. Kubernetes CSI PVC and there has an ID. And uh, it looks like everything's working well. So we, get, we have validated that it is actually working. Now I don't need that, so let's get rid of that. Let's go back into the Raspberry Pi and then do a delete and then make sure that we don't have it. There we go, we don't have it. And eventually we should see here that it goes away. So let's just give it a little bit of time. All right, I waited a little bit, but I noticed that it hasn't deleted it yet. What I think happens here is that the default storage class that gets created when we executed our commands previously don't have the deletion policy set up. So that's why even though we deleted the PVC from the cluster, it actually did not delete it from the NAS. It's still there, even though it's not being used. So we have the option of editing that um, volume snapshot class or the storage class and make sure that it deletes that from the NAS. Or we can just come here and check that it's not being used. If we can see, 
all of the others are connected, but for this ice cosy target that was created for this specific volume, it's not connected. It's ready, so it's not being used. And if you look at the lawn, the lawn by extension should not be used because it's not connected to it. So we can just get rid of it. Then we have that space back in the NAS. So that's not a big problem. I'm just gonna go here, delete this, and delete the map lun. Remove that. I'm gonna have to put my password in here and then submit that. Then it deletes the target and we go back to the lawns and it's removing that lawn. So in the end, instead of 13, we have 12 lawns again because we were not using it. So just wanted to make that clear there that you need to make that change in the storage class to automatically delete or if that's not the case then you have to come back into the NAS after you delete a PVC and delete it yourself manually here. So now I no longer need that test YAML so let me get rid of that. Okay so we're back how we were before and we have tested that it actually works. As it is that should be enough for us to store our data in the NAS outside of the ice causes of the Raspberry Pis but we also have the opportunity to create volume snapshots on a schedule if we want it. So we could tell the system to, you know, every day or every three days or every week, whatever, make a snapshot of a volume that we have so we don't lose data, right? So that for that, in order for, for us to use that, then we have to use a repository that was created by somebody else because it's currently being considered by the Synology community and the developers of the Synology CSI, but there is no active solution for that yet. So he created that himself. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that first we have Helm in our Raspberry Pi. We need to validate here with Helm version. If you see an output like this, it means that you already have Helm installed in your system. If you don't, then you need to install it. And to install it, I've provided you the commands that you need for that. So basically you need to download the this installation script for uh, Helm and then you give it a 700 permissions and then you just trigger that script and that script is going to install Helm in your system. And the thing is, once you have that set up in your system, then you can execute the following lines. The first line that we need to run is this one that tells Helm to install the schedule volume snap shutter CRDs that are in a repository that it's owned by the creator of this. So we're gonna do this. And then it says that it has been added to our repositories. So now that we have added that to our repositories, then we can run this command here. And as we can see, it has created the snap shutter for us and it has successfully deployed that to our Kubernetes cluster. So we have that available for us. So now that we have the snap shutter deployed, we can actually use an example that I've provided in the documentation to create a schedule to do volume snapshots of a specific volume. I'm not gonna do it in the video because I've already deleted the previous PV that I created, but it would work for that PV. And then you can set a schedule on how often and how much of the retention you want in the snapshots that you create on the schedule. So that's it. We got our additional abilities for our cluster to connect to the Synology NAS to store our persistent data. And that is great. It works amazingly. Kudos to the people that have worked on this. And that's gonna be it for this video. So if you liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. and. Also, write down in the comment section below if you like the content and what kind of contents you would like to see. And remember, I'm not monetizing this channel, so if you want to support me to continue creating this type of content, feel free to donate in the link in the description below. And that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take good care.